Right now, there's someone who's listening to me who's dealing and has been dealing with grief and you've been trying to navigate through this in your own strength. And perhaps you've even been, even been praying and asking God to remove this thing from you because it seems as though you can't make any progress whatsoever. But I want to encourage you this morning to know that there's grace for you. A year ago yesterday makes a, a year that we ended up uh, that we laid to rest uh, a beloved person within our family. And that's um, not only just in our family, but also um, within our ministry, and that's Bishop W. L. Lee. Uh, he's not only the founder of our ministry, but he's also our grandfather. And we laid him to rest a year ago yesterday. And uh, this morning, as I was preparing, I was asking the Lord, what would he like for me to share um, with our community? And he reminded me of this message that he that he gave me a uh, just about a year ago, uh, titled The Grace to Grieve. And so today we're going to be starting a 10-day devotional series titled The Grace to Grieve. The Grace to Grieve. And so um, I encourage you to lean in with us in this. If you or someone that you know have, have dealt with um, the loss of a loved one at any point in your life, I would encourage you to lean into this. If you know someone who's dealing with it right now, please share it with them because I believe that this will be helpful to all of us, not just one of us, but all of us. And so um, perhaps you haven't experienced this before. I would encourage you to get this now so that you'll have it um, when that time comes because the reality is it's appointed unto every man that we will experience that same exit that we will pass. And so I would encourage you um, to hold on to this now so that you'll be prepared for it later. Now, um, we're going to walk through this over the course of 10 days. And the whole purpose of this particular message or a series of messages is that we're going to look at Jesus as our model. We're going to look at Jesus as our model. Um, I am not the perfect model um, to use my life for the purpose of examining it for grief. I have lost loved ones, um, but I can't, I can't say that my loss looks like yours. Um, perhaps you lost, um, you lost someone, maybe there are people here who have lost spouses. There are people who that are here that have lost children. Um, there are those that are here that have lost parents. And I cannot, I cannot, um, I cannot relate to you on every level of perhaps the loss that you've experienced. But I want you to know that there's one person that we can look at who we can go to and he can truly sympathize with every one of our weaknesses, and that is Jesus the Christ. And so I want to take you to Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16, and we're going to look at what the scripture says about Jesus. It says, seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens and he identifies him as Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. Now look at verse 15. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted or tested as we are, yet without sin. And so what this tells us so far is that everything that we've gone through, uh, Jesus can relate to it. Every challenge that we faced, it, that we faced, every test that we've experienced, I want you to know that Jesus has gone through it too. But the good news is that he did so successfully. Now, I want you to look at this last verse here, verse 16, and it says, Let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. What does this tell us, brothers and sisters? It tells us that we can go to God. You can go to him boldly. You can go to him without, uh, without hesitation. You can go to him and you're going to find help. You're going to find grace when you need it the most. And we find that grace through Jesus himself. And so the whole goal of this is to look at the life of Jesus. And he's going to model for us how he grieved. And what I believe it will do is it'll give us it'll give us a perspective of how we too 
can process grieve, grief rather. So let's go ahead and first define grief. Grief itself is a deep piercing distress caused by or as if by bereavement. And the bereavement is the death of a loved one. And so, again, grief is the deep and piercing distress that's caused by or as if by bereavement, the death of a loved one. And I just want to go on the record and say that grief um, is not only dealing with the loss of a loved one. You can actually deal with grief uh, with all kinds of loss in your life. Uh, we won't necessarily point them out directly this morning. Um, but what I want you to know is to keep your mind open because you can be grieving even though you haven't lost someone. All right. Now, let's go a little further into this. Um, today, what I want you to know is that there's grace for you. I want you to know that there's grace for you. I want you to put that in the comment section. I want you to say that aloud, write it in your notebook, say there's grace for me. There's grace for me. There is. There's grace for me. Apostle Paul talked about this piercing distress that he was experiencing in his second uh, second letter that we have in our Bible. Um, to those in Corinthians, in Corinth, rather. And to the Corinthians, in the 12th chapter, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, we find him talking about this thorn in his flesh, this thorn in his flesh. I don't know if you know anything about thorns, but they are sharp. Um, they they pierce you. They, they provide such a piercing pain if you are to touch one, and they're not comfortable at all. And it sounds a lot like how Merriam-Webster defines grief. And Paul asked the Lord three times. He asked him to remove this thorn from his flesh. Lord, can you relieve me of this? Can you help me with this? And he even identifies that it wasn't that God sent that, um, that this was actually the doings of the working of the, of the enemy. Um, he said that the adversary, the enemy of, um, uh, sent this over to me, a messenger of Satan, rather, was sent to buffet me, to slow me down, uh, to cause me to, to seize up, to hinder my progress. And I want you to know that, um, that in this prayer that he prayed, the Lord didn't answer until the third time. And this is God's response. This is actually Jesus's response. And he says, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. And here goes what Paul says, Therefore I will most gladly rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. In this scripture, I believe that we find really the definition of grace and that grace is power. I want you to put that in the comment section, write that in your notes, that grace is power. Oh, yeah. Well, Brother Brooks, I thought it was unmerited favor. I agree with you. It is. But based on what Jesus is saying, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. And what we're finding is that God provides power to the one who is powerless. Paul had no power to overcome the thorn in his flesh. And God let him know. He said that my power is sufficient for you. It's in your weakness that my strength is made perfect. What's the point, Brother Brooks? Right now, there's someone who's listening to me who's dealing and has been dealing with grief, and you've been trying to navigate through this in your own strength. And perhaps you've even been, even been praying and asking God to remove this thing from you because it seems as though you can't make any progress whatsoever. But I want to encourage you this morning to know that there's grace for you. Hallelujah. I want you to say it again. Say, there's grace for me. There's grace for me. I want you to get this in your heart to know that God would not leave you in this place without help. In fact, he let us know in his word this morning that we can go boldly to the throne of grace. We can go boldly to the throne of grace and we can find help in our time of need. I want to encourage us this morning to know that there is grace for you. And you can go to God and get that grace. 
Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that good news? Let's pray today that brothers and sisters, that we would lean in to that grace, the grace that God provides for those who are powerless. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. And Lord, we honor you today on this beautiful, marvelous Monday. But Lord, for somebody, they woke up and they didn't feel so marvelous. For someone, they woke up and they had a heaviness on them because of a loss that they are enduring in this season. Lord, I pray right now that God, that you would give them the grace that they need because it's only through you that we live, move, and have our being. Lord, forgive us today of our sin. Lord, things that we've done that came short of your glory, things that we're not aligned in alignment with your, your assignment for our lives or your character, Lord. And Father, I thank you that you're faithful and just to forgive us and purify us of all, all of our sin and all of our unrighteousness. Father, from this place, we want to tell you thank you because in your scripture, it tells us to be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and thanksgiving. Father, we lift up a thanksgiving to you today. You have been so good to us. You are wonderful. You are kind. You are God. You are all powerful by yourself. You are sovereign. And Father, we know that you are supreme ruler. And despite the chaos that may take place in our lives, God, you are always in control. So, Lord, we approach your throne this morning with all respect, with all honor unto you, knowing that there's grace for us, knowing that there's grace for my brother, knowing that there's grace for my sister, knowing that there's grace for that child, knowing that there's grace for that uh, for that widow and that widower. Father, there's grace for us. There's grace for us. There's power for us. You never expected us to go through this in our own strength, but instead you said that it's in our weakness that your strength is made perfect. So, Father, we call on you saying, perfect your power in our lives. Jesus, hallelujah. We call on you saying, perfect your power in our lives today so that we can navigate through this grief by your grace. And as we close out this prayer, we pray the way that your son taught us. And we say, our Father who's in heaven, holy is your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. And all of God's children say, amen. Well, God bless you. My name is Enrique Brooks. I'm honored to be the senior pastor of Thrive Church and host of the Prayer 365 podcast. Well, we're on a mission to transform lives through lifestyle of prayer. This week, we started a devotional series titled The Grace to Grieve. It's a 10-day series. Make sure you join us every day. In fact, tell somebody about it. There's someone that you know who needs this in their life right now. And I believe that God had you here today so that you can go and tell them. God bless you. I love you. Take a moment to reflect on today's devotional. Take care.